Good Tuesday morning, church family. And I'm excited to be with you today on this Tuesday morning. Um, if you're watching this morning or if you're watching in the afternoon, watch another day. Um, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for paying attention and keeping up with this series that we're doing um, on defining love out of 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. So that's where we will be this morning if you want to take your Bibles there. And my family has sure missed you, church family. We've missed seeing your faces. We've missed uh, giving and receiving hugs. We've missed handshakes and pats on the back and smiles and and laughter. And we, uh, I cannot wait to get back in church and be able to see everybody again. I do want to give a little update. Uh, Pastor asked me to give an update just on what's happened in my life these last two months. I know as our country has kind of shut down, um, each person has uh, different circumstances that have you know risen in their in their lives and. The last two months have been uh, pretty interesting for us here, um, our family. I left church on a Wednesday night back in March. Uh, some of you might remember that. And I went to the ER because um, I, I thought, you know, I was having some difficulties with the situation. And it turns out they found a mass in my, um, in my body next to my colon. And I spent uh, in the next six weeks, two different stints in the hospital, uh, four different antibiotics that they tried, CAT scans, um, a pick line put in my arm, trying to decrease this mass and to find some help. And, and finally came down to surgery. And the surgeon that was uh, given to me you know, by the hospital, um, he asked me to find a second opinion, to find uh, someone else who could maybe give a little bit more insight. And so I did end up finding a, a second opinion from another surgeon, had a couple of scopes done and just about a week and a half ago, I had surgery and they removed a small, uh, about a foot of my small intestine, a couple inches of my colon and my appendix to help uh, take care of the issue that I was having. And thank you so much for those who have prayed for us, prayed for our family who have reached out to us with um, outside of the circumstance, maybe not even understanding or knowing what was going on, but just reach out to us with cards and with with flowers or, 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 or text messages. Thank you for those who've prayed for us and it's been definitely an interesting time these last couple of months. Well, if we want to jump in your Bibles there, 1 Corinthians chapter number four, you know, we live in a self-centered world. You know, we by nature are self-centered individuals. And God here calls in his, in his Bible, especially here in 1 Corinthians, um, is for us to be the opposite of that, the opposite of that. Um, and he describes it through love. And so we're defining love this week. And before we get started, um, let's ask the Lord for his blessing this morning. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another breath um, in which to live. We thank you for keeping our family safe during this time. Thank you for providing jobs and providing opportunities for us. Lord, there's so much that we could be and that we should be thankful for. Father, we pray that you would groom our hearts, that we would truly really be grateful for all that you've given us. There's way too much that we could ever name, but that shouldn't stop us from trying. Father, help us to be grateful and thankful for the gifts that you've given us in families and in friends, a church body, the gift of salvation and your word. Father, we pray that you'd bless this morning and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So why does, why does, why is the Lord describing through love um, the events of 1 Corinthians chapter number 13? And why is he doing that? Because perfect love casts out fear, the Bible says. It casts out the fear of expectations, the fear of inclusion, the fear of acceptance, the fear of whether I'm worthy or not. Perfect love casts those out. All the insecurities that we have, perfect love, that's what, that's what casts those out because insecurities are fear. They're fears of what we have, why someone would not accept us, why someone would not approve us, why we are not worthy enough. Society says, where you want to go in life, do everything you need to get there. Push anyone around in order to get there. But what we're finding here in 1 Corinthians and throughout the Bible is that that's not God's way. It's not what he chooses to, to say and to do. And let's look here at chapter number 13. Look at verse number four as we continue our series this morning. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. 
Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. And we're going to focus on the latter half of that verse this morning. Vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Those two, diff- those two phrases there, vaunteth not itself, has the idea of boasting not of himself or herself, not bragging on myself. And is not puffed up has the thought of um, not being proud, not being inflated, not being haughty, not looking down on others. Love, charity, isn't prideful. It's the opposite of that. And God breaks it down, these two different phrases, and that's what we're going to talk about this morning. Two different thoughts. Number one, vaunteth not itself. Love, charity, it boasts not of itself. It's not, oh, it's all about Ryan. Look what I've done. I'm a better Christian. I'm a better father. I'm a better friend. I'm a better brother. I'm a better worker than you because that's that that's not what that's not what love is. That's exactly who the Pharisees were in Jesus' day. They were the ones that were robed in all this magnificent um, garments and they had um, they had scripture written on them. So that when you looked at them, you thought, hey, that's the religious person. That's the person who knows God and he has the, who's who's right with God. But it, Jesus, man, he he blasts the Pharisees. He said, look, you're you're like whited sepulchers. You look nice on the outside. You're like a gravestone. You look nice on the outside, but on the inside, you're full of dead men's bones. You're like a cup that looks great on the outside. You pick it up and you're like, oh man, I'm gonna drink out of it. But inside, you're 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 vile. You're unclean. And that's where we are when we boast about ourselves. When we boast about ourselves, when we say, "Look what I've done," we are we're prideful. We're, we're vaunting. We're vaunting ourselves. But notice, the Bible doesn't say that charity vaunteth not. The Bible just says that charity vaunteth not itself. Instead of boasting of what I've done, if I love others, I will boast and I will brag and I will rejoice on them. I will brag on them. I will brag on them. Think about this in our in your in your marriage. In your marriage. I mean, the best thing that I can one of the best things that I can do as a husband is to brag on my wife. Is to be thankful for her. It's to encourage her. Because you know where the marriage is going to go if all I do is just brag on myself. Man, I'm holding this marriage together. I'm the one that's doing this. I'm, and I leave her out of that. Man, that that marriage is 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 gone. But not just in marriage, but this goes in our relationships. This goes within the church body, and this goes beyond that to people that we interact with, the people that we work with, people in our neighborhoods, the um, the, the the family members that we have. And we just brag on ourselves, and we we don't brag on them. Those relationships, those that's not love. Love is the opposite of that. It's bragging on them. How do we feel when something good happens to someone else and not us? Think about that. How do we feel when something good happens to someone else and not us? And how we answer this question honestly tells us a lot about how we love others. And if we're if we're envious, if we're um, if we're jealous, I deserve that. I've worked harder than them. I deserve that. God, why aren't you blessing me? It's become more about us and not about them. And love is the opposite. It's less about Ryan, and it's more about somebody else. So let's rejoice with others. Let's weep with others. Let's brag on others. Number two. Charity not only vaunteth on itself, but number two, is not puffed up. Paul actually calls out the Corinthian church here in 1 Corinthians like half a dozen times between chapters number three and chapter number five. Of, and he calls them out by saying that they are puffed up. If you go back and look at chapters three, four, and five, he calls them out several times that you are, you're puffed up. You're looking down on somebody else. You, you steam yourself to be higher, to be greater than somebody else. It's the idea of being haughty. It's the idea of looking down on others. But love sees beyond attire. Love sees beyond living circumstances. Love sees sees beyond family situations. Love sees beyond past mistakes. 
And whatever else you want to put in there, love sees beyond that. Love, love sees the soul that needs Christ or has been redeemed by Christ. That's what love sees. The gospel is the epitome of love. Christ is the epitome of love. And the gospel transcends. It goes beyond every kind of culture, every wall, every border, every discrepancy imaginable. Love and the gospel goes beyond that. It sees past that. Because if we're honest, neither you nor I, we're worthy. We're not, we're not worthy of, of Christ's love and, and the gospel. We're not worthy of that. No, the Bible clearly plays that out there. So what makes us think that we can look down on somebody else? We can't. We can't. So friends, today, as we finish up here, let's work at, at these two things starting today. Number one, let's boast, let's brag a little bit more on others. And let's rejoice when good things happen to other people. Let's, let's not be envious, let's not be jealous. And number two, let's see all as love, let's, let's all see as uh, love in Christ sees. We're, that we're equals, that we're needing him. Uh, let, let's look beyond family situations, let's look at Look beyond living circumstances or past mistakes. And let's see how Christ sees somebody. Let's see how Christ sees somebody. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Thank you for um, for listening as we looked at defining love and what the Bible says about love. And I truly believe, man, if we, if we brag on others, if we rejoice with others, then that does something good for me. It's not just the person who receives that encouragement. It's, it's good for me. It's good for my heart. It's good for my soul when I can rejoice and when I can encourage you know, somebody else. Father, we thank you so much for this day again. And Lord, we pray that you would mold us, that you would make us to be more like your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you would help us as we die to self each day, as we brag on others, as we are thankful for what you've done for us. And as we see others through that, see that we are equals, that we shouldn't look down on others. Father, I pray that you would mold us to be like your son, the Lord Jesus, in all that we do. Father, keep us safe on our way. We praise you again for the gift of salvation. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Friends, thank you so much for listening in. We pray that um, your day would be blessed by this. And I pray that you would grow just as as we are growing in our study here of love, that we would be a church that is not has the, that doesn't just have the term of being friendly, but has the church of the term of being loving. I believe we want to be. I believe that we are a church that's loving, but I also believe that I know in my own life there there's more love that I can give. There's more love that I can show. And friend, I pray that your your day would be blessed today uh, by God's word, not by me, but by God's word. And I pray that. Uh, you have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you soon.